This video tutorial is based on OpenBoard. What is an OpenBoard? It is an open source cross-platform interactive whiteboard. It's great for doing original lessons or opening up existing documents, whether it be a Word document, Google Doc, uh, a presentation, and then doing markups as you teach. So it's a fantastic app that you can actually record along side by side as you actually teach. If you haven't already done so, go to openboard.ch, click on the link, and download the program. As you can see, the program is available for Mac OS, Windows, and Ubuntu. Unfortunately, there is no Chrome extension for this program. And as a result, you will have to look for other whiteboard screen recording applications that will work. They all work on a very similar premise and function with lots of similar um, uh, capabilities. So after you've actually gone ahead and you've downloaded the program and installed it, if you've actually clicked on to create a shortcut, uh, a desktop shortcut, it'll appear right over here. Otherwise, click on the Windows button and type in Open Board, and then launch the program. So to begin with, you'll see that you actually have a whiteboard and a bunch of tools to do markups. Now, please note, when you record, none of these tools actually show up. I'm using a different third-party vending software to record this tutorial, so you can actually see the tools as they're actually being used live. The software that I'm currently using right now is OBS, or Open Broadcast Software. To begin with, on the left-hand side, we have a little page panel that flies out. And we can add pages, and we can also delete pages, or we can even duplicate pages if there's something on there. There's no need for that right now. I don't need this feature right now, so I'm just going to just reduce it like that. Next, what I want to do is actually just look at some of the different drawing tools. So I do have a stylus, an eraser, a highlighter, a pointer. This acts like a pointer somewhat, but not as many capabilities. I don't typically use this tool. You can zoom in, zoom out, laser pointer, line tool, text tool. And those are kind of the ones that are essential that you need to know. So suppose I'm a social studies teacher and I'd actually like to teach a lesson on, say, political ideologies. So I'm going to actually make my little, my little, I guess, line with one political ideology on the left and one on the right. Now, right from the beginning, you can see I have the wrong color. No big deal. I can just hit the undo button, select a new color, and maybe I'll make it just a bit thicker, and I'm just going to just draw that right across. Great. Now, since there's kind of like five main different types of ideologies, I'll just put these little ticks here. Whoops, I'll just undo that and redo it so it's nice and straight. Now this text tool here is great because I can take the text tool, click on here, and then start typing. So on the far, far left is communism. As you can see, the text is a little bit too big, so I can actually stretch this out like this, or I can actually just make it smaller like that. I can create a new text box, or I can actually duplicate the one that I already have. I'll just go ahead and duplicate it. Over here, we have liberal, liberalism. And again, I'm just going to duplicate this. We have moderates. I've got conservative. And last but not least, we've got fascism. All right, great. Now with the selection tool, I can definitely do a better job of aligning these. And don't forget, every text box does have its own options. So as you can see right over here, I can duplicate stuff. Um, I can choose a different type of font, different color. I'm not gonna go over this in detail because you can kind of play around with it yourself. It's very, very much like a regular word processor or Google Docs. Okay, great. So I've got this all set up and I'm actually ready to teach a lesson and create a podcast. So the very first thing I have to do after I've got my whiteboard all set up is go over here to open board. And what I want to do is I actually want to show the podcast controls. This is not going to start recording. It's just going to show the, rec uh, the, the recording tools on the bottom right hand side. There they are. Now I could go ahead and hit the record button, but I'm not going to do that because like I said, I'm using a different third party software to record all this so you can see all the tools and whatnot. However, if I did want to of course start recording, I'm going to hit this button. Now say I'm recording. 
and I can add my text just like I'm doing right now, or sorry, all my speech, just like I'm doing right now. And if I want, I can add additional information. Um, I can also mark things up as well. So suppose I just want to talk about communism, and I'm just going to circle that right now. Or perhaps it's just maybe better to highlight things. Or you might not actually want to mark things up, so you might just draw a student's attention by actually just clicking on the laser pointer and then talking about that. So lots of different things you can do in that respect. Now, I know a lot of teachers already have their presentation set up or their notes in other external documents. And so we can actually switch from the whiteboard to actually recording the desktop or the uh, screen. So in order to do that, I'm going to go show desktop. So you can see I've got my desktop right over here. And I'm just going to move my tools. Now, I don't have the same number of tools as I did before, but I still have the same functionality of the limited tools that are actually showing. All right, and uh, if, I, if I ever want to go back to the whiteboard, I can just toggle back and forth. I suppose it's not the most intuitive, but you know what? It still works. Okay, so I've got this presentation right over here. This is a former design study student of mine, and he was an exceptional student. So if I was teaching a lesson on putting together a portfolio presentation, then what I would definitely want to do is talk about his type of work and his contents. And Kane's got some great, great examples here. Um, what I would probably tell Kane is this is a great one point illustration drawing. Maybe put this on its own slide so I can kind of mark that up. Or maybe I could tell Kane on his two point perspective that this really isn't needed. I know this was his reference and this is his finished piece. So we'll just grab a little markup here and we'll just say, yeah, we don't need this. Okay, this is all part of the lesson. It's all captured, just like we're doing right now. Now, with this software, you'll notice that if I mark something up, I can also erase it just like I have in the past on the whiteboard. And of course, I still have the functionality of the laser pointer, which I really like as a tool. If I do want to flip over, I have to select the selection tool. Then I actually have access to the program itself. If one of these tools is enabled, I'm not going to be able to scroll through the various slides and whatnot. So if I'm on here and I'm saying, hey, Kane, you need to actually hide your levels. And you also need to um, add your additional two views and stuff like that. And that's great. And, you know, if you're sort of stuck and you don't know what to do, it's because you're not on the selection tool. So that's how that works in that respect. Now, going back into uh, open board on the actual whiteboard part, I'm just going to come over here. So the lesson's going really well. I want to go ahead and save it. How do I do that? Well, the nice thing about open board is it does it for you automatically. As soon as I hit the stop button right over here, it's going to actually create a file right on your desktop. And that's going to be ready to go into YouTube right away. So assume this is still recording. I hit the stop button and then we show the desktop. Let me just minimize this here. It creates a file automatically for you. My advice for anything is before you know it, when you continue recording, you're going to have lots of different open board casts, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Is once you're finished, go ahead and do a quick rename. And I'll just call this um, presentation. It's something I was just experimenting with a little bit earlier on. Great, you're done. However, you still need to get this format and you've got to get it actually into YouTube. So that's an easy little bit. Opening up my browser and getting into YouTube, I'll go right ahead. If you haven't already done so, log in with your credentials. You can see I'm already logged in right over here. And then what I plan to do is I plan to go ahead and click on the plus add video. Okay, from there, I'm going to select the file. And if you recall, it is actually located on your desktop. So wait a moment and it'll start uploading. Okay, let me just move this out of the way. There we go. Um, I can change the title if I want to. I can put in description if I want. Um, and thumbnails, once it's finished processing the video, it'll give me different thumbnails I can select. I'm not too concerned about that right now. Now, YouTube has actually changed its policy, and you have to actually mark whether it's for kids or not for kids. I'm going to always say it's made for kids. This is a teaching environment. And in doing so, um, it's going to minimize the number of ads that you're going to, you know, your, your audience is going to actually have, which is a great thing. Okay, so I think I'm good. Uh, let me just go back here. Maybe I will. Nah, that's okay. I won't worry about that. Okay, next. I'm not going to worry about add an end to screen or add cards. And I got two choices here. I can make this public or I can actually just leave it as unlisted, which means that anybody who has a link can view the video. Otherwise, they can't. Because I like to share my resources, I'm going to make it public. 
Now, before I do that, I probably want to take a, uh, I guess, a copy of the actual link of the video. And it's on my clipboard, so I can actually put it into Moodle. I can put it into Google Classroom or whatever other platform you're using. So let's go ahead and hit the publish button. All right, great. And again, I can capture the link right over here if I want to copy it, if I forget that I did or whatever it is. Okay, so we'll just close that up now. Now you're going to actually see, here's the video that's uploaded. Again, there's no content in here. I just created it just so you can actually see it anyways. And I have a bunch of my other video capture tutorials used with Open Board. All right, so that concludes the tutorial. Um, it's a fantastic teaching tool, especially if you're in a conventional classroom and you have some kids that miss. Obviously, your lesson is recorded. It's there for the students. So you're going to spend a lot less time catching up. If you're in an online environment, this is going to be the primary way that you're going to teach. Um, or you're going to actually you're going to use maybe something like Zoom or live conferencing software. And when you are finished using Open Board, you need to exit out of the program. Actually, I'll just go revert back to the whiteboard here. And then all I have to do is hit the quit button. All right, hope you liked the video and I hope it helps. That's pretty much it for the lesson. Thanks now.